I can understand that no one really wants to talk to little Kevin's father because there was a pretty public rift between our side of the family and him right after Tracy passed. I just want y'all to understand, man. Always build a village around you because you never know. Just pour into people. And see, people that knew me and Tracy, that knew us, that's met us on that level, it is no question. No question. No hesitation. No question. All good. It seems that Kevin Surratt, the husband of the late Tracy Braxton, has found himself at odds with his in-laws. The situation has escalated to such a degree that the Braxtons have reportedly severed all ties with Kevin, imposing a family-wide ban on any interaction with him. Now, it's no secret that the Braxtons have expressed their reservations about Kevin in the past. However, in the wake of Tracy's passing, their stance appears to have hardened significantly. They're said to be adamant about cutting all connections with him, leaving many to wonder about the underlying reasons for such a drastic measure. What could Kevin have possibly done to incur such wrath from the Braxton clan? Kevin isn't taking this lying down. He's gearing up to share his side of the story, and it promises to be quite the revelation. Oh, when my baby passed, you know, I was like, wow, this is real. You know, I had to move out of our place, and I had to, you know, really just reboot my life. And I thank God for a lot of people who understood and embraced me as a man that knew us and met us on a level from which we were or from which we came and it gave me the lifeline that I needed to keep moving. Tracy and Kevin, lovebirds since 96, weathering a quarter century of marital storms. They weren't shy about airing their dirty laundry, even taking their relationship woes to the small screen on Marriage Boot Camp. But just when it seemed they'd found their happily ever after, tragedy struck. Tracy, at the young age of 50, succumbed to esophageal cancer, leaving behind a devastated family. Kevin, the grieving widower, broke the heart-wrenching news to TMZ, revealing Tracy's year-long battle with the disease. But hold on to your hats, because the drama doesn't end there. Enter Kevin Jr., caught in a perfect storm of personal turmoil. Not only is he grappling with the loss of his beloved mother, but he's also navigating the choppy waters of divorce from his wife, Olivia Heron. Talk about a double whammy. And where's Papa Kevin in all this? That's the million dollar question that's got everyone's tongues wagging. Trina spilled some tea, hinting at a strained relationship between father and son during this time of grief. But wait, there's more. Whispers of police involvement and arrest warrants are swirling around little Kev, adding another layer of intrigue to this family's trials. As if that wasn't enough drama for one family, the sister's attempt at grief counseling turned into its own spectacle. Just when you thought things couldn't get more intense, Tamar dropped a bombshell, claiming Tawanda doesn't give two hoots about her. For me, you have to respect where a person is. That's just it. And until that person or whoever is, is willing to move forward in that way, then you just have to respect where they are. Well, the respect is a behavior, but I want to know how it feels to not have access to your sister. But be honest, it's not, not, care. it's not, it's not, I don't care. it's not, it's not connected to a feeling, though. <laughs> no, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, you can't speak, okay. it's not, it's not connected to a feeling. Okay. It's not connected to a feeling. Tamar, with all the subtlety of a sledgehammer, drops a truth bomb that shakes the very foundation of sisterly love. She's pointing fingers, claiming Tawanda's got more time for Tony and Trina than for her own flesh and blood. Can you believe the nerve? Tamar's painting herself as the one always extending the olive branch, while Tawanda's apparently only interested when the cameras are rolling. Now, Tawanda's sitting there, her face a masterpiece of conflicting emotions. You can almost see the gears turning in her head as she tries to recall the last heart-to-heart -heart with her sister. September's birthday came and went without so much as a peep from Tamar, she claims. Mind you, this whole showdown is happening in March. As Tamar digs her heels in, refusing to budge an inch, you can see Tawanda's patients wearing thinner than dollar store toilet paper. Finally, Tawanda's had enough. She drops a bombshell of her own, declaring that from here on out, her world revolves around her immediate family, partner and kids only. Tony's in your household. But I, they call me. I talk to them every day. Girl, you don't answer the they phone. Call. That's Girl, not true. Stop. Let's be specific. Did you call me yesterday? <laughs> I did. Actually. Did I answer it? Well, because we're taping now. No, no, no. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma oh, when you yeah. called me, every time Girl, you called, that is not Every the truth. time you called, I answered. Every time you text, I answer. 
That's a fact. Okay. That's girl. a fact. So I'm a liar. You, no, you said that. I didn't call you that. That's the word that you're using. Everyone knows that I always have receipts. Picture Tamar, emotions running higher than a cat on a hot tin roof, sharing a tearjerker video of Tracy's final moments. But wait, the plot thickens. Faster than you can say family feud, Tamar's on a social media warpath, throwing shade at her kin like it's going out of style. And let's not forget her mystery man, Junior, caught in the crossfire of this family drama tornado. Then, poof, Tamar vanishes from the digital world quicker than a magician's rabbit. But honey, the damage was done. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should I say the missing elephant? Where in the world is Kevin during all this televised grieving? It's like having Thanksgiving dinner without the turkey. Kevin's not taking this lying down though. His Instagram live was serving more tea than a British afternoon social. He didn't outright spill the beans, but honey, he was dropping hints like breadcrumbs in a forest. The other thing is, I really want people to understand this part. <laughs> To death did us part. Please understand that. Please do. Because some narratives will not include that in that situation. And uh, I, I thank God that uh, he gave us that. And uh, like with me and my son, I'm doing everything I can to make sure he's good. See, we have a whole nother village, you know what I mean? That was always there for us. Whole nother village. And that village came and embraced us and helped us on many levels. When we, when we found out about Tracy uh, having cancer December the 15th, 2020, at uh, Georgetown Hospital, uh, we had went through some stuff. Uh, prior to that, we was in California. As they brought up, we was out there taping. Tracy talked about she couldn't swallow. I immediately called the doctor. Thank God our doctor was always there for us. So Kevin's playing it coy, but honey, his silence speaks volumes. He's dropping hints like a leaky faucet, and anyone with two brain cells to rub together can see he's been iced out faster than a polar bear's toenails. Now, flashback to 2022, it's deja vu all over again. When Tracy took her final bow, instead of coming together like a bowl of gumbo, this family started feuding like cats and dogs. Kevin's trying to give his wife a proper send-off complete with Zoom links, because nothing says 2022 like a virtual funeral, and bam, the sisters come at him like he's trying to sell Tracy's memory on eBay. They're crying, no funeral, no wake, cremation station, ASAP. But Kevin's not having it. He throws the funeral anyway, and wouldn't you know it, it turns into a three-ring circus. Tracy's sisters and mama, no shows. Her daddy, treated like a gate crasher at his own daughter's funeral. Fourth row, no speech, it's like he showed up at the Oscars in flip-flops. Kevin's firing back, though. He's painting a picture of devotion that'd make Romeo and Juliet look like fair-weather friends. Doctor's appointments, funeral plans. He's saying he was there through thick and thin, sickness and health, the whole nine yards. Meanwhile, the Braxton sisters are off doing their own thing, throwing a birthday bash for Tracy and the great beyond. And there's Tony popping up on Tamron Hall like a whack-a-mole, confirming the whole shebang. Uh, t I'm okay. Today's okay. It's okay. It's not my best day, but it's an okay day, you know, and I'm happy that I'm here and I'm happy that I get to talk about it. and her birthday's coming up soon on the second and my sisters and I, we're going to celebrate and have a big Tracy that day. Let's rewind the tape to four years ago, shall we? Picture this. Tracy's calling Tawanda a snake and there's more hissing going on than in a reptile house. Tamar's throwing Kevin's past in his face like it's confetti and Tawanda's clapping back about having a real man. Talk about family love, huh? Fast forward to now, and poor Kevin's been left out in the cold like last week's leftovers. No invite to the memorial. That's colder than a polar bear's toenails. But honey, let's spill some real tea here. This family's got more issues than a magazine stand. Tony's heart's doing the cha-cha when it should be waltzing. Trina's battling her own demons, and Tracy's son? Bless his heart, he needs more support than a push-up bra. Tawanda's playing secret keeper like it's her full-time job. And Tamar? Well, she's being Tamar. Unpredictable as a weather vane in a tornado. Now, here's the million dollar question. Is it fair to ice out Kevin faster than a popsicle in Alaska? About as fair as a carnival game, if you ask me. The man was Tracy's husband for crying out loud. 
Cutting him out of the narrative is like trying to tell Romeo and Juliet without Romeo. And this show? Honey, it feels more premature than a souffle taken out of the oven too soon. These folks need healing, not cameras in their faces. So what's the verdict? This whole situation stinks worse than month-old milk. The Braxtons need to take a long, hard look in the mirror and ask themselves, is this really what Tracy would have wanted? Because from where I'm sitting, this family drama is doing more damage than a bull in a china shop. What do y'all think? Is Kevin getting a raw deal? Or is there more to this story than meets the eye? Drop your thoughts in the comments.